Hey guys, so here are some worked examples of the Khan Academy exercise modeling with sinusoidal functions phase shift. All right, and this is one of the hardest exercises in the entire class, I would argue, uh, just because it merges trigonometry with real world context, and that can get a little bit confusing at times. But really, what I'm going to do here is try to boil it down to really what's going on and um, in, in each problem. Um, it's really not that complicated kind of once you get the hang of things. So focusing here on the left where it says what you need to do, right? So for, each, so for each of these problems, what you need to do, what it's going to give you is a function, right? So it's going to give you a function. And really, it's just going to ask you something you already know from prior exercises, but it's going to ask you in a, in a fancy way, in a word problem way. Really, all it's ever going to ask you is for one of these six things, right? The amplitude, midline, period, phase shift, the maximum or the minimum of the function, or it's really just going to ask you to plug in a point into your function and see what comes out. All right, so one of those six things, and we already know how to do uh, those six things from prior exercises. And I drew a graph here on the left that has all of those pieces incorporated so you can see graphically what it means and what it's asking you. All right, so if we ever get confused, we can always graph the function and then pull our answer out of the, the graph of the function. All right? Um, number two, down here, number two, um, the other context, the other type of problem you'll see is sometimes they won't give you a function. They'll just give you a bunch of words um, in, a, in a real world kind of context, right? And then in that case, you have to create the function yourself, which is not going to be that bad, right? Once we create that function, then we just go back to number one, right? Given that we have a function, it's going to then ask us to find one of those six things, which you already know how to interpret from the function if we have it from prior exercises, all right? So let's take a look at some examples and try to apply this and see if we can kind of figure out, get a rhythm, uh, get, a hang, get the hang of what's going on here. All right, so here's an example from the, um, from the exercise. So this is one of the examples. It says um, the average daily t high temperature in degrees Celsius in Karachi, Pakistan on the teeth day of the year. So T is the number of days in the year. That's my variable, T, All right? It's going to be modeled by this equation. So the daily high temperatures, it kind of makes sense that you would model it with a trigonom trigonom uh, trigonometric equation, temperature, right? Because throughout the year, the temperatures throughout the year and in the winter, say, right, will be very cold. And then they'll get warmer, and then they'll get cool, they'll cool off again, right, as you go through the seasons, right? So basically, we're just going through the seasons, and we can model that with this trig function, all right? So how can we answer the question, what do they want us to do? I say, what are the highest and the lowest average daily highs in Karachi? and then give exact answers. So I'll tell you there's a very fast way to do it, just looking at the function here, right? Or we can graph it. If we, if we can't see it immediately, we'll have to graph it and then use our graph to figure out how to answer this question, all right? So highest and lowest temperatures, right? What does that mean? Remember I said in these problems, if they give you a function, it's gonna ask you one of six things. It's gonna ask you up here, amplitude, midline period, phase shift, max min or evaluate at a point. So which one of those six things do you think it's asking me? It was asking for what is the maximum daily temperature and the minimum daily temperature? It's asking for the max min of my function, right? And so how do I get the maximum? So here's my maximum here, my little chart here on the right, right over here, right? How do I find the maximum and the minimum? How high it goes, right? Well, what if I knew my midline I can get that straight from my function. And what if I knew my amplitude? I can also get that straight up from my function, right? Well, I know if I add my midline to my amplitude, I'll get to the max, right? And then if I subtract the amplitude from the midline, I'll get my min, all right? So let's do that. Let's go down here, all right? So I need my amplitude. So what's my amplitude, All right? Amplitude is going to be the number in the front of the trig function itself. So this is kind of written a little bit backwards from what we're used to here in my function. But my amplitude is this number in front of my cosine. It's a negative 5, all right? And then my midline, I'm sorry, I wanted to do that in red. Let me do that in red. Uh, ooh, there we go. It's not liking that. Never mind, I'll do it in green. All right, the midline is going to be, right, midline is going to be this number that's by itself on the, on the end of the function, right, which is a positive 29. 
All right, so if you wanted to, you can kind of start graphing this thing out. And in general, what it's gonna look like is you'd have a function, right? You'd have a midline at positive 29. So here's my positive 29. That's my midline. And we've got a max and a min that are determined by this amplitude, right? So let me do my midline. Here's my midline. I don't like that. Let me do it in a different color. Midline, there we go. And I've got my amplitude is gonna be five. We said negative five, right? That just means that I start down below. So I'm gonna start down below, count down five. Right, so count down five. What is that gonna be? 29 minus five is gonna be 24. So that's where I'm gonna start. And then I would go up to, well, I'll go count up five, right? Well, what's 29 plus five? That's gonna be 34, right? So that's the max and the min temperature. So this amplitude of negative five just means I start down here, count down five from the midline. And that's where I'll start. And then it comes up, goes up to the max, then comes back down, goes down to the min, right? That's one period. And then it'll just keep repeating, all right? But I don't need to know all the rest of that information. All I needed to know was the 34 and the 24. So my highest average temperature is going to be 34 degrees Celsius. And my lowest is going to be 24 degrees Celsius. All right. Let's check out another problem. All right. So here's another temperature problem, kind of similar. It says in January, the average temperature T hours, so T is hours, right? After midnight in Mumbai, India is given by this equation. All right, so this is gonna determine the temperature throughout the day or per hour in the city Mumbai, right? Which you can kind of expect would be similar, right? At night, it gets colder. So at night, it would be colder, right? And then during the day, it gets warmer and then it cools down again as you go toward night and that repeats throughout the day, each day, right? So that's another periodic phenomenon that you can use trigonometry to model. All right, so... Like I said, it gave me an equation, so it's only going to ask me to, it's going to ask me in a fancy way to evaluate one of those six aspects of this function, right? So what is this question asking me to do? It says, what is the coldest time of day in Mumbai? And give an exact answer, right? So at what time, this is saying at what time, so I'm trying to solve for T. I want to say at what time, what can I plug in for my T so that it works out to give me the coldest day? So that, that function gives me the coldest day. So what is the coldest day in terms of temperature? That is a minimum temperature, right? So what I need to do is figure out first, what's the minimum value of this function? And I wanna figure out what can I plug in for T in order to get that minimum value from my function, all right? So the minimum value, just kind of like how we did up here, how did we find our max and our min? We drew it out on a graph, right? But what was the operation that we ended up doing? We ultimately only used these two numbers, right? We used the midline and the amplitude, right? So what we did is we started here at the midline. We started here at the midline, right? And then we added the amplitude and subtracted the amplitude to get the max and the min. Right, so if I come down here, we can graph it again, but this is a shortcut. I'm gonna say, what's my midline? Right, what's my midline? It's this number that's by itself. It's the 24.5. And if I want the max of my function, right? So if I graph this thing, here's my midline at 24.5. If I want the max and the min, so if I want the max, I would just add the amplitude. Right? So what's my amplitude? It's this 5.5 here, right? So what's 24.5 plus 5.5? The max then is going to be up here at, what is that, 30, right? So my max temperature is going to be at 30 degrees, right? Similarly, we can do the minimum temperature. So what's the min? Well, we do the midline, 24.5, and we need to go down by the amplitude, subtract the amplitude, right? So we go down 5.5 minus 5.5. So the min temperature is going to be 19 degrees, right? So that's part of what I needed, right? Remember in my question, it was asking me at what time, what is the time when I have the minimum temperature? So at what time can I plug into my function here in order to get 19 to pop out? So what does that mean? That means I can write this. I can say, let's copy that function. We have 24.5 minus 5.5 
times sine of all this stuff. Is that 2 pi? I'm going to write it like this, 2 pi over 24. And then I have a t plus 1. Right? I want that to be equal to 19. All right, so what does that mean? How can I get that to be 19? Since 19 is the minimum, right, what did I do to get that 19? I did 24.5 minus 5.5. That's what this is right here, right? Which means that this piece has to be equal to 1 in order for this to equal 19 at the end, right? So what this simplifies down to is you would say then sine of... 2 pi over 24 times t plus 1 is equal to 1. All right, and we can drill in even further and say, well, sine of what is equal to 1? That's got to be, if we go back to when we first looked at sine, cosine, tangent, and evaluating these functions, you can even use your left hand rule, right, in order to figure out what sine of, uh, sine of what is 1, right? So that's going to be pi over 2. So it's going to be pi over 2 gives you a one. So what that means is that inside of here, all this stuff inside of my sine function, two pi over 24 times t plus one, all that stuff has to simplify down to pi over two, right? Because if this stuff is pi over two, then sine of pi over two is one, which means that this whole thing is one, which means that this is uh, going to be equal to 19, right? Or essentially, this 5.5 times 1 is 5.5, right? And then 24.5 minus 5.5 gives me the 19. So it all boils down to this here, solving for t from this equation. All right, so what we did is drill down, drill down, drill down until we figured out uh, how to solve for t. So let's do it. So how can I do that? Let's simplify this. I'm going to do pi over 12 t plus 1 equals pi over 2, right? The pi's can cancel out because they're the same on both sides. I'll just divide by pi on both sides. They're gone. I'm going to multiply everything by, let's just multiply by 12 on both sides. So the 12's cancel out here. And then here I get 6. 12 divided by 2 is 6, right? And that's still equal to, so let's rewrite this. I have t plus 1 on the left-hand side equals 6 on the right-hand side. If I solve for t, subtract 1 on both sides, you get t equals 5. So t equals 5 hours after midnight is when you hit that temperature of 19 degrees, when you get the minimum temperature uh, of the day. It's going to be t equals 5 hours after midnight. All right? So again, what they asked me for was essentially to evaluate a point. Remember those six things? that it was going to ask me for. So it actually, actually asked me for a couple of things. I had to first figure out what the minimum value was, but ultimately what it was asking me was evaluate that function at a point. So what value, what point can I plug in? What time can I plug in in order to get that minimum value? All right. Let's try just a couple more. All right, so here's the International Space Station. Two minutes after its perigee, closest point in kilometers is given by this function. Right, so the International Space Station doesn't just revolve around the Earth in a circular fashion, right? It actually uh, revolves around the Earth in more of a, an elliptical manner, right? So here's the Earth, and then the International Space Station will kind of come in closer and farther out, and then closer and then farther out, and it kind of slings itself around the Earth in that way. And then the perigee is the closest point. So here's the closest point to the Earth, right, as its perigee. Um, and it only reaches a perigee once in every orbit. All right, so how long does the International Space Station take to orbit the Earth? And you want to give an exact answer. So what does that mean? If this altitude, we can kind of graph that altitude, right? The altitude here is the smallest, right? Maybe out here, it might be the biggest. And then it hits that perigee, or it's not going to hit the perigee again until it comes back around, right? Until it comes back around. So the altitude's fluctuating. It's going back and forth. The International Space Station it has a midline, but it's going to fluctuate back and forth between the max altitude and the min altitude, right? So let's say this is altitude, this is my y-axis. And then this is gonna be, I believe, time for my x-axis. So it's gonna start at its perigee and it's gonna go up to its max, the maximum altitude from the Earth, and then come back and hit the perigee again, right? And it'll just repeat. It hits that perigee once every rotation around the Earth, right? So 
how long does the International Space Station take to orbit the Earth? That's just saying, what is this period? Is basically what that boils down to. Remember those six things that I said that's going to ask you about the function that it gives you? All those six aspects of a function, right? Which one of those six is it asking me? In this case, it's asking me about the period. All right, so let's go down here, try to figure this out. All right, so if I look at my function here, what is the period of the function? We have to kind of rewrite it just a little bit. Um, you really don't have to if you can see it, but let's rewrite it just to be, uh, be safe. So I'm gonna rewrite this, it's gonna be 415, then minus sign, and all I'm gonna do is kind of what I did in the prior problem where I did two pi over 92.8. I pulled that 92.8 kind of in the front, and then I have a t plus 23.2, because that looks more like the form that we usually see these functions. This number in the front, is gonna to have to do with my period. It's not my period, but it's related to the period. So I say that two pi over 92.8, I'm gonna write that down here, two pi over 92.8. That's the number that's in front of my x, or my, my t in this case, right? That number is related to the period um, because that number that's always in front of t is always two pi divided by the period right? Well, the period is written here, then I don't have to do any work. It's the 92.8 is going to end up being the period. So that's the length of time. It's about 90 minutes, an hour and a half that it takes for the International Space Station to do a full rotation around the Earth, a full revolution. It's going to be 92.8 minutes. Again, all they were asking us for is basically the period. All right, and the very last problem. So in this problem, um, this is talking about something uh, that you may not know unless you've taken physics, torque, right? And it doesn't even matter. You don't have to understand what it's talking about. All you have to know is what we've done in the prior problems. We do the same things. We have to come up with a function in this case, though, because it doesn't give us a function. It wants us to find it, and then it'll ask us a question about that function, right? But it does not matter what the context is as long as you understand how to get a maximum, a minimum, and a midline, and then the period, all right? So let's do that. Let's find those, uh, those few things that we need. We need, um, let's do this. We need amplitude. And for any function, any trig function, we need five things. Let's do amplitude, midline, um, period. Uh, we usually say shape, like is it sine or cosine? And then we say phase shift. Phase shift. All right, so the amplitude. Let's do the midline first, actually. Let's see if we can find that. Um, so we've got a piece of gum stuck to a tire, right? And its weight is pulling forwards with a maximum torque of 0.01 Newton meters. Uh, that's the unit for torque. And then when it's on the back of the tire, it pulls backwards with a minimum torque of negative 0.01 Newton meters. All right. Uh, and so it tells us right there, we've got a maximum and a minimum, right? It goes back and forth between 0.01 and negative 0.01. So I can already kind of draw some stuff out. All right, so here's my graph. Let's do it this way. And goes up to 0.01 is my max, and down to negative 0.01, negative 0.01 is my min, right? And so then what's the midline gonna be? It's gonna be the, not the line that's right in between those two. It's gonna be the x-axis. So the midline's gonna be a value of zero, All right? So here's my midline. We're gonna say it's got a value zero, all right? What's the amplitude? Well, the amplitude is gonna be the distance from the midline to either my max or my min, right? And what's that distance? It's gonna be 0 0.01. All right, uh, let's see. The rest of this we have to get to read further to get. Let's see. Um, the maximum torque is reached. I'm reading this bit right here, right? The maximum torque is reached once in every rotation, which is every 1.2 meters. So it says one rotation is 1.2 meters. A rotation is just a period, just like the International Space, Space Station problem that we saw. A full rotation was just a period, right? So 1.2 is my period. So I can write that down. 1.2, um, and then we have to find, does it have a uh, phase shift and uh, figure out what the shape of the graph is as well, right? Um, the first time it reaches its maximum torque is 0 0.3 meters into the race. So it's the first time it's at its maximum is at 0 0.3 meters. So if I graph this, here's my maximum here, right? The first time it hits that maximum is gonna be at 0 0.3 meters. That's when it's at its maximum, which means that it has to come down hit the minimum, and then come back up, and then it'll repeat, right, over and over again. That's my period, 
that's one section, that's the 1.2 length. So if this is 0 0.3 plus 1.2 is going to be 1.5, is that value there, right? And we say, what is the shape of this function that I just drew, of this graph? Is that a sine or is it a cosine graph, right? Well, if we remember, if we have like a midline in general, right, and a max and a min, then sine starts on the midline on the y-axis and goes up, comes down, and comes back up. That's sine, right? Cosine starts at the maximum on the y-axis and it comes down, comes back up for one period, right? And that's for uh, cosine and sine, that's a length of one period, right? So out of those two graphs, which one looks like the one that I just drew? It looks a lot like the cosine graph, right? You can see it starts at the maximum, comes down, goes back up, and that's a cosine graph, right? So my shape is cosine. And the phase shift, well, if I compare, remember I said cosine is supposed to start on the y-axis, right? Sine and cosine. If I compare the shape that I have here to the shape that I ha have in my function here, it looks like it got shifted to the right, right? This maximum point's not on the y-axis, it's shifted to the right by 0 0.3 units, right? So my phase shift is gonna be right, 0 0.3, all right? So I take all those pieces and I can create a function just like in the prior um, exercises that we've done. So my function is gonna be, um, what do we have? We have our amplitude, 0 0.01, right? And then my shape, we said is gonna be a cosine function. And then my period, remember we don't put the period in here, we need to do a little modification. My period is actually gonna be this number, this number that I need here, is going to be 2 pi divided by my period, which is going to be, in this case, 2 pi over 1.2. And I'll just leave it like that. We can reduce that and simplify it, but I'm going to leave it like that just to keep things simple. Right? So we've got 2 pi over 1.2. And then we have x. What is my phase shift? That's what goes here. So we said right and 0 0.3. And remember, this is the opposite of what you would expect. If it's right, I need to do a minus. Right? You would think a minus means left, but remember for transformations, horizontal transformations like phase shifts, it's the opposite of what you would expect. So to the right, 0 0.3, minus 0 0.3, and then I have a midline, right, of 0. So normally we put the midline plus the midline on the outside, but since it's 0, who cares? Plus 0 is just itself, right? So this right here is my function, all right? And now I look at this problem that it asked me here, that I have a, now that I have a function, it's gonna ask me for one of those six things that, does, that these problems ask me for. It says, what is the torque when Casey has written four meters, right? Round your answer if necessary to four decimal places. So out of the six things, it says, what is the torque when Casey has written four meters? So is that gonna ask me about, let's go back up here, out of the six things, it's gonna ask me about amplitude, midline, period, phase shift, max min, or is it tell, telling me to basically plug in a point, right? And when I read that, I recognize that as saying, it's not asking for any of these things. It's not asking me um, for like a max min or anything. It's saying, what happens when I plug in that value four for the distance, right? What is the torque when I've gone four feet or whatever the, um, the unit was? Let's see, so let's go down here, four meters, right? So. And really what I need, this is all in terms of D, right? So you can put an X here, but it's really supposed to be a D for my variable. It doesn't really matter, all right? But what I'm plugging in is distance, right? So four meters is the distance. It's basically saying plug in that four meters and see what comes out. And that's going to be a calculator problem, right? And once we that round to four decimal places. So let's plug that in. I have, let me plug this into my calculator, 0 0.01 cosine. 2 pi over 1.2, and then we have a 4 minus 0 0.3. All right? And we'll figure out what that's equal to, and that's going to be my answer. So make sure you're in the right mode, first of all. This has to be in radians, right? So if you're using a calculator, make sure you're in radian mode. And we're going to do 0 0.01, and then cosine. And we have a 2 pi divided by 1.2, and then we have a 4 minus 0.3. All right, when I do that, I get 0 0.00, let's see, four decimal places, so I get 87 Newton meters, 0 
0087 Newton meters is going to be the answer for that one. All right. So just to recap about these problems, remember, go back to the very beginning, right? They're all going to ask you, we have a lot of different types of problems in here, and I only went over a few of them. All right. Um, so they're all going to ask you, you do them all the same way. They're going to ask you basically to find one of these six things, and you have to be able to spot what it's asking you to find, right? If it doesn't give you a function in order to find those six things, right, then you need to create the function first. And then we go back and we say, now that I have my function, what is it asking me for? It's going to be asking me for one of those six things, right? And then those six things are aspects of the function that we've learned how to find in prior videos and exercises. So this is these are things that you should already know how to do. All right. If not, feel free to send me an email. If you get stuck, send me an email, let me know, and um, I will help you guys out. Good luck.